I just chaired a session on late-breaking clinical trials on innovation and that was very interesting stuff and I just would like to report on some of the novelties that, that I encountered. The first thing was something that has to do with LV lead placement and guiding of the LV lead placement and in this, in this novelty they have a new MRI based imaging that is then merged with fluoro and also with pre-interventional CTs merged with fluoro so that you then can um, visualize the exact site where to, deliver, where to deliver a CRT LV lead. Because of course of, of scars and of other uh, problems we have a third of non-responders, a third, 30% of non-responders in CRT placement. And that was really fascinating and interesting and it's uh, vendor independent software so it can be applied in every lab. Second thing that was very interesting was a new balloon that, um, that can be used during LV lead extraction procedures. And so this, uh, this balloon comes in either by the jugular vein, subclavian vein or the femoral vein with a stiff wire and this balloon is 8 centimeters in length and whenever you have a rare complication that is an SVC tear which is a very malignant complication with a high mortality you can blow up your balloon within one minute and you can rescue the patient and that was really fascinating because they did some uh, analysis comparative analysis with the registry in the United States and they could show whenever there is an SVC tear and you cannot deliver a balloon and you have to wait for the surgeon even in the surgical room they have a worse outcome much worse outcome so the, the mortality was around 40 to 50 percent which is very very high and it was significantly reduced by this balloon so it's really a question whether we should use this balloon in our extraction procedures either prophylactically or at least put in a sheath with a stiff wire to have this tool readily available and very quickly then blown up in, in the SVC. The third was very interesting with regard to ablation technology. Uh, this paper was on a novel ablation tool with a novel technique that uses cryo but at very low temperatures. The temperatures are 196 degrees minus Celsius and at this um, temperature you can be, become very powerful with regard to ablation and you, they have designs that are not balloon based so you can have a circular catheter but you, you can also make it more longitudinal you are very variable and flexible in the design and they showed data on atrial flutter and atrial fibrillation ablation proving that this tool is very very powerful and it's very promising it's a complete new platform for ablation and I think this has a great potential of course being powerful means also that it has to be safe on the other side and it has to be shown but the first experience is very very nice on that and very good with regard to safety another um, interesting paper was dealing with smartphone devices and with watches and wrists with, with uh, wrist devices that you wear wearables with regard to AF detection showing that these devices have now a very high accuracy a good sensitivity, specificity and accuracy of detecting atrial fibrillation. I think this is to come for AF screening procedures, for AF screening programs population based programs, I think this will come there is also some caveats. I think we should have, as doctors, an eye on it. So we should have the possibility of validating the ECG, which is very, very important. And they have a high rate of uh, losing electrograms because of uh, bad quality. So this is still a concern. However, I think this will come. And I think this was most of the very exciting news that we have here, and I'm very happy to 
to have been in this session.